All right. So the statement of cash flow is the last of the four statements that are required in a complete set of financial statements. So in the earlier first half of this course, we went over the income statement, the statement of retained earnings, and the balance sheet. This is the last uh, statement that completes the, the, the package. So there are three types of activities that this statement uh, analyzes. And these are the three activities that businesses do on a daily basis, in an annual basis. And they are cash flows from operating activity. Operating activity is everything they get up in the morning to do. So this is all their sales to customers. This is manufacturing their products. Um, this is the marketing and advertising. Everything that goes on day in and day out. Then there are cash flows from investing activities. This is what you use, what expenditures, long-term expenditures that you're, you're doing. So buying fixed assets, building a new building, building a new factory, buying a new delivery truck, buying a piece of manufacturing equipment. Uh, these are all of the long-term and intangible assets that are on the asset side of the balance sheet. The operating activities uh, focus on items from the income statement as well as current assets and current liabilities. That's the working capital that the company uses on a regular basis. And then lastly are financing activities. This is the rest of the balance sheet. This is long-term liabilities and the, the uh, stockholders' equity section. So selling new common stock. Buying treasury stock that Boeing was so actively doing over the last uh, six months. Uh, paying of dividends. Refinancing. Getting new debt. Um, paying off that debt. Okay? All of that is financing activities. So this is the basic outline of it. Is there will be a section for cash flows from operating activities. There'll be cash flows from investing activities, and lastly, cash flows from financing activities. Adding up those three sections gives you either a net increase or decrease for cash during the period. What kind of cash has been generated? Add that to the cash at the beginning of the period. That should give you the cash at the end of the period. So this is another statement that when you get to the end of it, you should have a reasonable amount of assurance as to whether or not you've done it correctly. Because you know what cash changed, what the increase or decrease in cash is. So these three sections could come up with that same number. All right, act operating activities have kind of already gone over. Uh, inflows are from the sale of your products and services. So whether you're a manufacturing, a wholesale, a retailer, or just a service entity, uh, this is from the sales of those uh, types of, of uh, whatever your core business is. And then operating is the purchasing of inventory, paying employees, paying your operating expenses, paying your taxes, and, and the like. Investing activities is the, is the inflows are all from either the sale of property, plant, and equipment or investments. So... If you sell property, plant, and equipment, you sell a patent, uh, you sell off some marketable securities, long-term marketable securities, uh, that is the inflow in the investing activities. Uh, and the converse is buying more property, plant, and equipment, buying an intangible, buying a copyright, buying a, a trademark, or buying a patent, uh, purchasing long-term investments. Financing is issuing long-term liabilities, signing new loans, new mortgages, selling new bonds that we're going to be going over in the last chapter here in a couple of weeks, uh, issuing new stock. And then the, the uh, decrease in that is paying dividends or buying treasury stock. All right? So those are kind of an outline of the uh, sources and uses of cash. 
So operating activities. Operating activities has two options. Uh, U.S. GAAP allows the statement of cash flows to be created using either a direct or an indirect method. And we're the only country in the world that allows that. Everybody else requires that it's the direct method. Because we have an option, overwhelmingly the indirect method is what is used in the United States. So if you pull up statement of cash flows from almost any entity in their financial packages, they're using the indirect method. And I personally think the indirect method is the most informative. And the difference between the two is the direct method goes out and calculates cash derived from sales. So it goes, it's broken down into inflows and outflows. And the inflows are all cash generated from your customers. All right? The outflows will be cash purchased for inventory, cash outlays for operating expenses, cash outlays for taxes, uh, and the like. All right? So they identify what cash has come in the door and what cash has gone out. The indirect method starts with net income. So it ties the financial statement of the income statement to the statement of cash flow. So it begins with net income. And then it makes a series of adjustments to reconcile net income to operating uh, cash flows generated from operating activities. All right. So those are the two difference. They come up with the same answer. So this is the direct method. So cash received from customers, cash payments for merchandise, operating expenses, interest, income taxes to come up with net cash flows from operating activities. They, the authors seem to think that the advantage with the direct method is, is that you know, it does, in fact, break the business down as if it was a cash-based business generating cash and paying cash out. So um, they're not, it's not very frequent. You very rarely see a direct uh, method, and the direct method only affects the first of the three sections. So cash flow from financing activities and cash flow from investing activities are the same no matter which, whether you use the direct or indirect. It's only the first section that is different. And that's what, that's why we're spending two more days doing problems on this particular one. So the first day, I'm going to do nothing but the indirect method, and then when we return from uh, uh, Thanksgiving break, I'll finish up with the direct method, just to show you the two. The final exam will be the indirect method. Okay, so that the court, the class that I'm going to teach next Monday is the one that you want to pay particular attention to, and then uh, not so much the day after Thanksgiving. So the indirect method, like I said, starts with net income. Then it does a series of adjustments to reconcile net income to net cash flows from operating activity. These adjustments, and there's detail in the later slides, these adjustments are basically what on the income statement that is generating net income, what items on the income statement are either one, non-cash in nature, Depreciation expense is the most common of those. Depreciation expense has nothing to do with cash. It's a debit to depreciation expense and a credit to accumulated depreciation. There's no cash outlay. You made the cash outlay back when you did the investing activity of buying the property, plant, and equipment. There's no, there's no cash when you do expense the depreciation like we saw in Chapter 6. Another one is, is what is non-operating. So gains and losses on sale of investments, gains and losses on sale of fixed asset. You sell a delivery truck. You sell a, a building. Those are non-operating in nature. So you want to back those out of net income. And then the last thing you would do is do a series of adjustments based upon current assets and current liabilities. And that will give you net cash flows from operating activities. Okay? 
this is the reason I like it is, is it does tie in the income statement so it reconciles net income. So it gives the readers of financial statements another statement to refer to. And this is the most commonly used in the United States. The International Financial Reporting Standards, known as IFRS, that basically the rest of the world uses, 120, 130 some odd countries, uh, it does not allow the indirect method. So it's only basically used here in the United States. As I indicated, both will come up with the same answer. And when I do the problems, starting Monday and then the following Monday, I'm going to be doing the same problems out of the back of the book. I'm just going to do one using the indirect method on next Monday, and then the following Monday I'll do the exact same problems on the board, uh, the first section of which using the direct method to show you the difference between the two. Investing activities is, in, so when you're doing this statement, what is required is you must have the an income statement, a detailed income statement, so that you can pull out net income, depreciation, any amortization that may be on there, as well as gains and losses on the sale of non-operating uh, activities. So, and then the current assets and current liabilities, changes in current assets and current liabilities. The investing activities is the rest of the asset side of the balance sheet. So when you approach a problem like this, you start with getting the differences between the prior year and the current year on the balance sheet. So you get did what every account, did it increase or decrease? And then for investing activities is the rest of the asset side because you're using the current assets in operating activities. So the rest of the asset side is investing activities. What did you buy? Cash proceeds or from the sale of a delivery truck. Cash used to purchase manufacturing equipment. Cash used to purchase office building. Uh, all of that, is, and, the, and that's it's a relatively straightforward section. All you have to do is explain what went on in the rest of the asset side of the balance sheet. Financing activities is the long-term section because you're using current liabilities in the operating section. So this is the rest of the balance sheet from current liabilities down. Long-term liabilities... So you went out, the, the long-term notes payable went up. Well, you borrowed more money. Bonds went up. You sold some more bonds. Your, your common stock account went up. You sold some additional co common stock. So all of those are going to be cash inflows from financing activities. Used for financing activities is primarily payment of dividends, that is a return, and that's going to come from the net change in retained earnings. And this will be on your final when we do the review for the final, is, is that I'm going to give you what the net income is, and then you're going to calculate what did the change in retained earnings. The difference between the two is dividends. All right, does that make sense? So in other words, if retained earnings went up $20,000, but net income was $25,000, you paid $5,000 in dividends. Because the only thing that affects retained earnings, for purposes of this class, the only thing that affects retained earnings is adding net income and then subtracting dividends. So if net income was 25,000 but retained earnings only changed 20, then $5,000 in dividends had to have been paid. Okay? And then it's no it's noted that there is on occasion uh, some activities that don't involve cash. It's kind of a they span both investing and financing. So you see that long-term debt has gone up and uh, the building account has gone up. 
Well, it could be that you 100% financed, bought a building by signing a note, a mortgage on it. So there wasn't any cash outlay. So that's down at the very bottom. Um, it's an option. You could do two things. You could either put the purchase of a building in the investing activities and then the issuance of a mortgage payable, cash proceeds from the issuance of a mortgage payable in the financing activities, or you could put it down at the bottom. Building bought for mortgage payable or building bought for, in this case, uh, common stock. Okay? So here's the whole detail of it. So cash flows from operating activities, this can be this is the only one that affects the direct or indirect. Cash flows from investing, all of the items for proceeds generated from and the proceeds used for, and then financing activities. So this is what the statement looks like. It is also a statement that measures activity, because it is measuring the cash generated throughout the year. So it is going to be for the year ending 12-31-2017. All right, let's look at an example. Here is a uh, multi-step income statement for Randall Company. It has net income of 108000 It also has depreciation expense of 7000 and a gain on the sale of land. This is enlisted in other income because it is not part of income from operations. And then here is our comparative balance sheet with the increase and decrease of every account. And this is what we're trying to reconcile to. We're reconciling to this 71500 the increase in cash. Cash went from 26000 up to 97500 So that's, the, that's your answer right there. All right. Retained earnings shows an increase of 80000 during the year. Net income was 108 and cash dividends were 28 So you'll be able to reconcile between the increase or decrease in the retained earnings account to be able to back into how much was the cash dividend. Let's see. Okay, so net income of 108, that is not the cash flows from operating activities because you're going to make a series of adjustments. So the adjustments are depreciation of fixed assets, any amortization of intangibles, so if you had a patent where you were amortizing a patent, you would include that here. Any gains and losses on the sale of assets, and then the changes in um, operating assets and liabilities. Okay, so increases in accounts receivable, de increases in inventory, prepaid expenses. When you get to the current assets and current liabilities, current assets have an inverse relationship to cash. If your accounts receivable balance goes up, what's happening? If, the, if you have an increase, a net increase in accounts receivable, what's going on with your customers? Anybody? If your accounts receivable is increasing from the beginning of the year to the end of the year. What are your customers not doing? They're not paying you, right? Conversely, if it decreases throughout the year, they are paying you. So that has an inverse relationship to cash because if it goes up, then cash goes down. So an increase in accounts receivable will be a negative adjustment to cash flows from operating activities. If your inventory account goes up, what are you doing? You're buying more inventory. If your prepaid expenses go up, your prepaid insurance goes up, you're buying more insurance. Current liabilities have a direct relationship to cash. 
If your account's payable balance goes up, what are you not doing to your vendors? You're not paying them. Well, a great way to have your cash go balance go up is to not pay anybody. Right? It's a wonderful way to save cash. It's not sustainable. Eventually they'll come for your car and throw you out of your apartment. Right? So an indirect relationship for current assets and a direct relationship for current liabilities. All right. We'll just go over this one at a time. So we start with net, net income, the 108000 and then we make adjustments to reconcile net income to net cash flows from operating activity. And from this example, there were two of them. There included in this 108000 of net income was a $7,000 deduction for depreciation. Well, that lowered net income. So if that lowered net income, we need to add it back. And then we had a gain on the sale of land that is non-operating in nature. So that gain of 12000 increased net income, so we now need to decrease it. Here's an increase in accounts receivable, a negative 9000 A decrease in inventories, positive 8000 A decrease in accounts payable, however, is a negative adjustment. Bless you. Because liabilities have a direct relationship to cash. An increase in accrued expenses, accrued payroll, accrued taxes, accrued interest. Increase, a positive adjustment because we're not paying them. A decrease in income taxes payable, however, is a negative adjustment. Add up all those adjustments and you get net cash flow from operating activities of 100500 so is this a direct or indirect method? Direct, no. Indirect. A direct method would say cash derived from sales to customers. Cash payments for inventory, cash payments for operating expenses, taxes, interest, and the like. All right? So this is the indirect method, and this is the one that we'll be focusing on for the final exam, for purposes of the final exam. We're back to dividends for some reason. I don't understand this. All right. All right, so... This is all financing activities. So it says that the common stock account increased by 8000 and the paid in capital in excess of par increased by 40000 So an analysis of both of these show an item on November 1 that we issued 4,000 shares of stock in exchange for cash. And the total is 48000 The bonds payable decreased by 50000 So this is the long-term liabilities. And so we retired a series of bonds in exchange for cash payments at face value. So 50000 So that's cash paid to retire bonds payable. This is investing activities. So the account, the uh, building account, went from 200 to 260,000. And it says on December 27th, we bought a building. And then we also see down here in the accumulated depreciation on December 31st, there's our depreciation expense uh, indicating the increase in the accumulated depreciation account. So we have net cash flows from investing activities, cash paid for purchase of building, 60,000. The land account went from 125,000 down to 80,000. Well, that was two transactions. One, we sold 60,000, uh, we sold for 72,000 in cash a building that originally cost us $60,000. So we sold off that, resulting in a $12,000 gain. 
Then we turned around and we bought a new piece of land for $15,000. So it went from 125 down to 80, but there were two transactions. So one is the proceeds from the sale of land, 72,000, that's an inflow in investing activities, and then the purchase of new land, 15,000, cash used to purchase land. So here's the cash received from sale of land, and then here's the cash paid for purchase of land. So two line items in our investing activities. So here's the entire statement. We started with net income. We made two adjustments for non-cash and non-operating, the depreciation and the gain on the sale of land, and then changes in current assets and current liabilities. We had two current assets and three current liabilities. That gave us net cash flows from operating activities. And then we had cash received from sale of land, cash paid for purchase of land, and cash paid for purchase of building. A net cash used in investing activities of a negative 3,000. And then we had the sale of common stock for 48,000. Cash paid to retire bonds payable of 54, and then cash paid for dividends. So cash flows used for financing activities was a negative 26,000. If you add up the 100,500 less the 3,000 less the 26, net cash changed 71,500. You had 26 at the beginning of the year. 97,500 at the end of the year. So that reconciles the net change in cash. All right, does this make sense? Or it will when I spend two more days doing it on the board? Right. To get the direct method, I'm just going to introduce this and then that'll be, the, that'll be it for the day. So the net cash received from customers, this is the direct method, less cash payments for merchandise, operating expense, interest, and taxes. So sales, this is from the income statement. How do you convert the sales to cash received from customers? How do you convert the cost of merchandise sold to cash payments? other operating expenses to cash payments for operating, and then uh, interest and taxes. All right, we had 1,180,000 received from customers. So that's in total everything we sold. To come up with cash derived from sales from customers, we make an adjustment based upon an increase or decrease in accounts receivable. So we had sales of 1,180, accounts receivable went up 90,000, so that means 90,000 in invoices were not paid for out of those sales. So we decrease that, that's for the direct method, the cash received from customers, 1,171,000. Same with operating active or cost of merchandise. Cost of merchandise is 790. That's everything we sold. This has two working capital accounts that affect it: the inventory account and the accounts payable. So increases and decreases in inventory. That either that increases cash payments and increases and decreases in accounts payable reduces cash payments. So we had merchandise sold, 790. We decreased inventory, which means we were not paying it off. We were using up inventory left over from last year. But our accounts payable also decreased, so we were outlaying cash to pay down our accounts payable. So total cash payments for merchandise, 785,200. Operating expenses. So this is an increase or decrease in accrued expenses. If we have accrued wages payable, that's wages we did not pay our employees. So if the accrued wages payable goes up, then we have to decrease 
the operating expenses because we're not paying them. So they had an accrued expenses payable, an increase. That is a deduction from operating expenses, and that means cash payments for operating expenses is 193,800. Income uh, gain we talked about. It's an active. It's an investing activity. So you'd get the full 72,000 from the proceeds, and then you would remove the 12,000 from cash flows. Income statement has interest expense of 8,000. So you look at the increase or decrease in interest payable. There was no no interest payable on the balance sheet, so 100% of the 8,000 outlaid was all done so in cash. Income tax expense, uh, 83,000. What is the increase or decrease in income taxes payable? Well, it decreased $500, so we outlaid more taxes than we reported on the income statement, a total of 83500 And that, mercifully, is the end of that.